Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're headed out on the water together. It's a beautiful day. It's blowing hard, but bass should be moving up. Let's go fishing. The goal today is just to do some old school bass fishing. I didn't even put my front graph on the boat today. I have no idea what the water temperature is. Visibility, plus or minus a foot. I'm hoping bass have started moving up. Today's one of those days where I've got the jacket on, but if the wind wasn't blowing, see it's calm here, it's howling across the lake over there, over on that shore, it's just ripping. If the wind wasn't blowing, I think you could almost get away with a t-shirt. And that's the days where fish start creeping up. So we've got a jerk bait, a chatter bait, a jig, a spinner bait, and a crankbait tied on. Just a handful of baits, old school bass fishing. We're gonna get up on the bank and go. We are on the board with a very white, very cold bass. That guy, that's that dirty white jackhammer, the 5.5 spunk shad on the back. He just loaded up on it, was all he did. Throwing that ATV, this is the 1.0. It's the small ATV. Throwing that bright color, springtime. This bank I'm on is really shallow. Wind's blowing right up on it. Fish are definitely feeding. But the 1.5 ATV, the size I like to throw most often, just digging bottom. And this wind is brutal, brutal. But that 1.0, it got it done. These little buck males, they're definitely up in the shallows. Hopefully we cross paths with one of those giant females creeping around. We'll see. You know, in spring, those males push up really, really shallow first and the big ones tend to hang back just a little. But on those warm afternoons, they'll be up there creeping. and Hopefully we get our shot. All right, now that I've been on the water for a little bit, getting a good feel for the conditions. I'm seeing that there are bucks pushing up shallow. I see my water clarity, you know, foot, in some areas, maybe a foot and a half of viz. But the, the ones that have bit me have been really shallow. So I took off my half ounce spinnerbait. I'm putting on a three eighths ounce Mega Bass SV3. And then I'm putting on an even shallower running square bill to see if that makes a difference. And then if we catch the same fish or less fish, or we never see a big one, we'll adapt again. Might be a little better fish. He's at least angrier. He is angrier. 
Come here, you. Switched over to that SV3 Dark Blades. I'm able to run that bait a little shallower. They all feel like good ones. I got him up on top. He's just sliding. So come here, buddy. <laughs> I've had a handful of short strikes. So I got the stinger hook on there. I actually had a big one eat it right at the boat, maybe 15 casts ago, significantly larger than the others, maybe five or six pounds. Uh, it ate right at the boat, right on the surface. So I actually physically saw the fish and never hooked it. And I had a couple other short strikes. So with this wind blowing, that's coming out of the north. I don't know what our water temp is, I'm gonna go with the finger test and call it cold. 50, low 50s, I don't know, it's it's cold water. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we don't have our electronics today. This is just old school fishing, you know, with, with all the drama in the industry right now between guys that love live and forward facing sonar and guys that think it's the end of the world, sometimes you just wanna forget all that and just go bass fishing. So today that's what we're doing, we're just blind, bass fishing in the aluminum boat just having a good time now granted i've got my ultrex i will not leave home without an ultrex and boy am i glad i have it on a windy day we're spot locked right now it's holding that's amazing but no other information just looking at the water conditions trying to adapt trying to catch some fish A little better fish. A little better fish there. We'll take him. Gotcha. I don't know if you guys noticed on that one, but it was right, right when I bumped the bait, right when I twitched and broke my cadence. So steady retrieving, and then just give it a little real bump just to make the blades flutter. Right when they fluttered, that fish ate it. I try to do that anytime I'm fishing a spinner bait. I like to add that in periodically throughout the cast, just to give it a little cadence break, try to get a follower to commit. Got him. Had a fish come off and a second one ate it. That's awesome. Nice. That was so subtle. Crazy. I've never
Man, that just never gets old. Golly, he hit that hard. Wow. Come back for more, friend. Got him. He came back for more. All right. We got so many on that spinnerbait, I just had to know. So I went back to a chatterbait. That's that jackhammer. That's that bruised green pumpkin and then a super bug spunk shad on the back. So coming out the gate, I looked at the watercolor because I, I have no history. I don't know what's been going on on this lake. I have no idea. So I looked at my watercolor. I put on bright orange, put on white, and I put on black and blue. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, as I'm fishing, I was getting bit in situations that I didn't really expect. So I went to that more natural spinnerbait. That SV3, that's more of a bluegill color, right? And here's the reason why. Foot, foot and a half of is, most of what I've seen is a foot. I saw one spot that was about a foot and a half. You give me a foot of visibility, that tells me muddy water, right? And I should be throwing those bold colors. But I'm not familiar with what's been happening at this lake and I can see debris back up on the shore. It looks like this place was flooded, which means that a foot of visibility could be clear compared to what they've had this winter. Maybe it was zero viz for two months and it just got to a foot of visibility. In which case that foot of viz is completely different circumstances. So when they started eating that bluegill, that clued me in because they were getting it good. I've had some short strikes, but most of them, they're eating it. That tells me they're having no trouble keying in at all. I think that this water was murkier and it is clearing. Uh, so I picked up, I took off this guy, bright, bold, and I went to this guy and immediately got two bites. So for me, that just confirms what I'm thinking. Again, I don't have electronics to tell me what's going on. I don't have history to tell me what's going on. I'm just paying attention to fish behavior and what I'm seeing in the water and I'm trying to adjust. That jig always comes through. Look at that. We're getting a lot of bites today. So I slowed down. Black and blue jig, hematoma color, not actual black and blue. It's got that X zone craw on it. That giant smoked it. Awesome. <laughs> Not quite the same size as the last one, but he wanted that jig. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. I got a little break in the wind. I thought that's the perfect opportunity to sit down and wrap it up. So we caught him a handful of ways, you know, and that's, that's how spring bass fishing goes. We've constantly got weather changes. Like right now we've got some dark clouds starting to roll in. Wind's blowing today. It was calm and warmer yesterday. 
colder the day before. You just constant shift. So we always go out on the water this time of year prepared with a lot of different baits. As you know, Tim and I both prefer to power fish in spring. That's because we're covering water looking for aggressive fish. So we started out with the chatter bait, the crank bait, the spinner bait. I had a jerk bait too, but the fish that I was after were so shallow it seemed like that the jerk bait was a little difficult. I kept hitting bottom. Same with that crank bait. Uh, we got one big bite on reaction and I missed that fish right at the boat. But other than that, it was obvious that it was those buck males. So either one of two things was happening and here was sort of the process in my mind. Either the big ones weren't moved up yet and I was gonna find them out on secondaries, out on deeper edges, or given the sudden shift in weather, they had just shut down. So I went to that jig and I just started picking apart cover. And I, I talked a little bit earlier, my mindset through those colors, I'm the same way with a jig. A black and blue jig is such a fish catcher across the country. But sometimes I struggle with black and blue mentally. Not, I mean, I catch plenty of fish on it, but just mentally, the blue is so bold that until I get that first bite, I just struggle with it. So this is actually hematoma is the color of this jig. And that just softens that black blue. So instead of being like bright blue strands, it's this faded blue. And I just, we're talking confidence, right? My personal confidence in spring, that hematoma just gets them for me in murkier conditions. And then I had that four inch craw on there. And of course I'll link all this stuff in the video description for you. I'll link the rods and gear I was using too. But my mindset was either those big ones haven't moved up or they are moved up, but they're just shut down. So I took that jig, started picking apart the edges of hard cover, laid down trees coming in, logs, stumps, things like that. I only got two bites, but one of them was a great big one. And that just proves the theory right there that those fish were just a little bit grumpy today. I love figuring them out. I love putting together the puzzle. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.